Good morning. If you are watching us and you can hear me, could somebody just indicate because I'm using a new microphone. I just want to make sure everyone can hear me before I ramble on. So if you are watching live and um, are able to, can you just comment in the box if you can hear me speaking? Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's happened a few times, so I just wanted to check before we got too far into the draw along. Thank you so much, everyone. And welcome. Thank you Thank you for joining us. Um, another busy one by the looks of things. And today we're going to be drawing this gorgeous little baby elephant or elephant calf is the technical term. Um, I've not had a go practicing this, so it will be my first attempt as well. Really chilled out, relaxed session, not not getting stressed about it going wrong it's all our own interpretation of it so if you haven't joined us before this isn't going to be like a really formal strict art lesson this is going to be really chilled out and i'm just going to show you how i draw and then you're obviously free to draw however you want and you've got complete artistic license so if you want to change things about it then you can um if you've seen them and if you were here last week with the tree frogs We've had some amazing designs come in and I love the creativity that everybody showed and just how much fun you had with it. So feel free to do whatever you want. Hi, Chloe. Hi, Emily. Hi, Sophie. Hi to everyone. If I've missed, I can see loads of comments coming. Hi, Amar. Um, yeah, so this is going to be our regular weekly treat and this is my way of getting myself sorted, start, set up for the week, a nice, fun, relaxed art session, which is just really good for our mental well-being as well. It's a nice way to just zone out and chill in, chill out um, and then have a nice drawing to show for at the end. And I'm even, or even going to share some elephant facts as we go along as well. Elephants are one of my favourite animals. Um, but if you know anything about elephants and you want to share the facts, then feel free to pop it in the dialogue box. So all we need is a pencil to begin with and something to draw on and hopefully your reference picture. So um, I always work on a screen just because it allows me to zoom in and see details a bit better. Um, but if you're using a printout, that will work just as well, I'm sure. Um, Emily's going to try markers instead of pencils this time. Nice, nice. So that be, you should get a more vibrant image from that as well. So, um, yeah, whatever variation you want you want to use or, or demonstrate, it's totally cool. There's no – the beauty of art and anything creative, really, there's no right or wrong answer. It's not like a maths question where there is one way of doing things. So there might be lots of different ways of getting to the answer, but the answer is the same. This is – there's lots of different ways of doing something and all the answers will be different. No two drawings will look exactly the same. And that's what I like about art. You can't get it wrong. Uh, Hannah was here last time on Mum's account. So you're here as Hannah today. Awesome. Um, Maya says I go over pencil with pen. That's a nice little trick, actually, because um, once you're happy with your drawing, it can help your design sort of pop out if you've got some a fine liner to be able to go over. But I'm going to just show with pencil and then watercolour pencil. So if you've got watercolour pencils, towards the end, I'll show you how I add water to make it look more like a painting. Um, but yeah, we'll just get started, shall we? Hi from Zion. Hi, Zion. Sorry. Um, I'm not going to remember everyone's names, but I'll do my best. Hello from Mia and Ethan. And where do we find the pictures? So in the event, the actual the actual um, t title page, the actual cover image of the event had this image on it. So you could you could screenshot it, um, download it. I think you can just copy and paste it um, even. But if not, you can see from my image, if you've got a big enough device that you're working from, and you'll be able to see as I'm drawing. So you could copy from, from the drawing even. Um, but I'll get started. Um, to begin with, just going to draw really roughly, sketch out an outline, and try and get the composition right. I'm not gridding out my page or anything like that. I just don't have the patience for that. I like to get the quickest quickest way of getting things done is how I work. So we're going to just start off with his head. I'm not going to go too big because I want to get his gorgeous, luxurious, not luxurious, gorgeous, extravagant ears in the picture as well. So I don't want to fill the space with just his face. I need to make sure I've got enough room for his ears. So, and this will show very faint on your screen at the moment, but once I've got the basic shapes down, I'll go over a bit darker for you. So I'm going to plot in the ears. They're almost like a triangular shape. And at this moment, we're not worrying too much about detail. We're just getting the basic forms in just so that we've got a rough idea of how this is going to look on the page. And then we can go back and sort of adjust things. And then his lovely little trunk. He's so cute. I'm saying he could be a she. We don't know, do we? 
and I plot in where the eyes are going because I think that's such an important thing when you're drawing anything in life. If you're drawing a living being, the eyes, I think, really make help to make it look alive. So I, I tend to focus on them quite a bit. Hannah's asking, can I do the face? Absolutely. It, like You can do whatever you want. So you can... Um, you can start on the face. You can start on the body. I'm not. I've, I might just do the front part of his body, just the neck. I might sketch in, but I think yeah, the the ears and the face and the trunk are going to be my focus today. So I'm just going back over with a bit darker, so you can see a bit clearer what I'm doing. And now. Now that I'm happy with the basic composition, I'm sort of adjusting the shapes a bit so it's a bit more accurate. Now, the key is keep looking back at your reference picture. Our, our memories play tricks on us. And as you get older, it gets even worse. So we have to keep looking back to our reference image because we think we know what shape something is. But actually, when you go back and check it, you're like, oh, that's not actually quite a triangular shape. And actually, there's like here on the ears, you can see some ripples. And I think this image is going to be we're going to put some shadow in. If you look at the photo, so it might be his own ear that's casting this shadow here. It could be the, the his mum that he's standing behind him that's casting a shadow. But we've got lots of shadow work that we're going to try and incorporate in as well. Try and make it look more 3D and more realistic. Cool. Hannah said you're good at drawing. Thank you. Well, I have had a bit, few years practice and I've been drawing on, on and off all my life, really. And you only get better by practicing it. And whatever you do, I said this last week, don't, if you're not happy with your drawing, don't screw it up or scribble on it or throw it away. Because actually at this stage, this does, this just looks like a really rough sketch. I could, you could, I could say, oh, that's, this doesn't look like a good picture to me, but it's a, all, all a process. And if we keep working on it, we can improve it and refine it and make it even better. So I've got the rough outline. I'm quite happy with how he's looking at the moment. Evie's put slow down. Yeah, it will naturally, I will start to slow down. This is just a rough, rough sketching. So I tend to work quickly on that because I don't know why, actually. <laughs> it's just but just putting those four, first lines down goes really quickly. I'm just going to rub out um, my rough, sketchy ones, the original ones. And I've, if you haven't seen one of these, a putty rubber, it looks like Play-Doh. These are really good erasers, so they don't leave marks on your page. I would, If you're getting a bit more into your artwork, it's a really good investment to make. They cost a couple of pounds. They don't... Um, like I say, they don't leave dirty smudges on your work. And because they're moldable, when you're working in tone, if you was drawing a picture just in pencils and you wanted to create highlights, you can sort of shape your putty rubber to make it really thin and then rub in highlights as well. So I would, rec I would recommend getting one of these if you haven't got one. So I tend to draw quite quickly in terms of uh, I don't like working on one thing for too long a time. And that's that's whether it's artwork, whether it's writing something, I get a bit bored and have to move on to something quickly. So I tend to draw normally no more than two hours on one picture. Um, this one obviously is going to be one hour. So we're going to, uh, that's why I think that's probably why I rush at the beginning because I'm worried that I'm not going to finish in time. Um Oh, Ginny's put she's drawing the elephant for a mum for her birthday. Oh, that's lovely. But it's, I think gifts like that are so meaningful because of the effort that goes into to creating them. Social media goes up the reference image into the discussion tab on the event. So if anyone is struggling from what they're working on, uh, Joe's uploaded another version for you just in the discussion tab. So I'm going to now look at the detail on his eye. Now, it's not – I can't zoom in any more on this. Oh, next week's I can't zoom in any more on this picture so a lot of this will be guesswork but this is where it's handy if you are working for reference pictures it's always handy to sort of look at other images of the of the animal showing different it doesn't have to be the same animal but looking at a picture as in the exact same animal look at other pictures of baby elephants and then you can get a better idea as to what is um 
going on what the eyes would look like. So elephants have really big brown eyes. Um, I'm going to leave some a white of his eye. There's a just a sliver of white that we can see, and then it's like a almost like a black line followed by a dark brown and a little black pupil. And what we need to do with highlights uh, with eyes is make sure we've got highlights in there because that can help to make um, him look more realistic. We'll work on the other eye. And you'll know again if you were here last week that I've not I've purposely not chosen a picture where he's completely face on because then that allows it means we don't have to get exactly symmetrical, which it can be really tricky and, and it throws me off. So, so my cheat is to pick a picture where they're slightly at an angle and I don't have to worry about getting it perfect in terms of symmetry. And they do have lovely eyelashes as well, elephants. So I'll know to put them in at some point. And what we've got to try and replicate as well, although he's a baby, obviously elephants have this lovely wrinkly skin. So we're going to try and sketch that in as we go. I'm not going to draw every wrinkle. I'm just going to focus on where they're the most um, obvious on his face and like on his trunk to show the different segments of his trunk as well. Daisy's sorry I'm late. Don't worry. I'm not taking a roll call or anything. So <laughs> you're just on time. Did you know that the elephant has 40,000 muscles in the trunk? I did not know that. That seems a crazy amount. I do know that there are three species of elephant. I actually thought there was only two, but there are three species. So I thought there was the African elephant and the Indian elephant, but there's actually two versions of the African. There's the African savannah elephant and there's the African forest elephant. Now I've, this is going to be an African elephant. And the way I know this is because of the size of his ears. So I don't know whether it's a savannah or a forest elephant, but Indian elephants have much smaller ears than African elephants. And they can use their ears to cool themselves down. They flap them to, to fan themselves. But also um, it's something to do with the wide space and cooling the blood down as well. But yeah, so Indian elephants have smaller ears and Indian elephants have like a double domed head. So our African elephants got one done and an Indian elephant would have like an indent in the middle. And Indian elephants have straight, straighter backs, whereas an African elephant almost, it almost looks like a hump on their backs. And get some wrinkles around the ear folds. And I'm going to sketch in this shadow because otherwise I might forget that when I'm shading. So I want to make sure I've got the shadow in. And start getting some of these segmented where the 40,000 muscles, that's just crazy. I mean, how many have we got in the body in total? Have they got more more muscles in their trunk than we've got anywhere else. And they obviously they are their nose, but they do use them like a limb. They do use them to hold on to things and move things around. And as we move down to his trunk, the, the wrinkles are closer together. Kelly's Sin, an Indian elephant in Indonesia. Oh, wow. How amazing. I've never, other than in zoos, I've never seen one in their natural habitat. I'd love to. The woolly mammoth is an elephant because it hybrid into the elephant. I would say it definitely evolved. I would say our common, the, not common, our elephants definitely evolved from woolly mammoths. They normally live in groups made up of sisters, mums, aunts. Um, Male elephants, once they sort of grow up, which is normally around 15 years, so 15 years old, they tend to then leave the herd and then they live in isolation. And you normally have a female elephant in charge of the herd called the matriarch. And they form really close bonds with each other as well. I've watched lots of uh, documentaries on elephants. Like I say, it's one of my favourite animals. And you, they, you, they, I'm sure they mourn when one of them, one of their herd dies. And I've seen, I've seen an episode on a wildlife programme where a, they lost a member of their herd and they travelled and they, they left, left this, well, they stayed with her while she was dying. And then it was like a year later, they visited the same spot and her bones were there and they all stopped and seemed to be mourning her. It's like they definitely remembered what was, what, well, their, their member of their herd, which I just thought was fascinating. 
people say animals don't have feelings. I, I, I strongly disagree. Another shadow there on his ear. And I'm also drawing a second line there because it's like the edge of his ear is folded round. So I'm going to draw that in. Not quite happy with these trunks. I'm just going to adjust that. Maya's washed an elephant in Sri Lanka. Oh my gosh, what an experience that must be. The baby ones were so cute, I bet they were. Did you hear them trumpet at all? So that's what I think this elephant is doing. He's got his ears forward. I think he might be trumpeting or about to trumpet, which is something that they can do to ward off any threat to them. So before they charge, their ears will be out and they will trumpet. But elephants generally don't have any pet predators. Um, so the lion attacks, for example, are very, very rare because of their sheer size um, and because they move in numbers, they're pretty safe. Their real threat really is just mankind in terms of habitat and stuff like that. We, we make it difficult for them to survive because we want land for farming, etc. And, and elephants can be pretty destructive. So where there are um, farm grounds in their habitats people will sometimes um, attack elephants because they want to protect their crops why was it an elephant shelter it tried to eat your hand it did trumpet as well uh, i'm sure it wasn't wasn't a meat eater though was it <laughs> was he just did he get confused between your your, your hand and the food you're offering offering yeah elephants can hear from a long distance and they can communicate through their feet as well so they can hear they can stomp feet to communicate with uh, elephants further afield and I sh when i when i say they communicate through they don't hear through their feet i'm sure i'm sure it's the vibrations that they can feel and they love watermelon even the skin wow yeah they're um big herbivores aren't they so I'm going to go in now and start with the eye. Now, the first thing I need is a dark brown. So I'm just going to start with the eye. And with watercolour pencils, like I said before, you don't have to worry too much about shading everything because you can spread the colour out with the, with the water afterwards. So I'm just placing colour at the moment, just making sure as well, try to keep highlights because that's what will help your picture look more realistic. So now I said I'm so hard. Sad people hunt elephants for their tusks. Yeah, that, so the ivory um, is very valuable um, and elephants do get poached. So they are unfortunately killed just so that people can remove their tusks. Um, and the ivory trade is illegal now, but that doesn't stop people still trading in it, unfortunately. It's not as common as it was. And we have sanctuaries and um, teams of people now that try and protect the elephants. But I know in some places what they actually do um, in order to protect the elephants, uh, same as with rhinos, they will anaesthetise the elephants and remove their tusks. They cut them off so that the poachers then have, don't see the point in, in poaching that elephant. So it seems bizarre, but it's, it's quite a clever way of protecting the elephant, isn't it? Kate's adding her watercolours now, or Erin that is, isn't it, I think? So yeah, even when you're adding the colour, make sure you keep looking back to your reference picture. So with the colours, I'm going to keep adding the texture as well. So I'm thinking about the, the wrinkles on his skin. And I'm starting to shade. And again, with watercolour, you can be quite rough with it you don't have to be exact placing the color on the page and then we can <clears throat> play around with it with the water and the paintbrush in a bit so i'm starting with some base gray and then i can go in and add in other details and other colors as well across his head it's very very pale it's almost white so you don't want to shade that too heavily I 
uh, I have hardly any grey pens, but I try as the colour will be slightly off. Give it a go. I think that's that's what's trickier with pens is that um, you can't really blend them, whereas pencils, you can blend colours together and create new colours. So let's see what you can turn out with your pens. What other elephant facts have we got? They normally live around 70 years, obviously, if they're not hunted. Hannah's put, I'll call my elephant Dumbo. Good choice. Have you seen the film? I'm, I grew up seeing the animation and then they've made a, a film of it now, haven't they? It's so sad, though. Ginny's using a slightly different photo, but it's still looking cool. That's awesome. That's the main thing, isn't it? And like I said, I say this a lot. Even if you're not happy with your image, keep it and if and put it in a file, store it away, put a date on it so you know when you when it was you you drew it. And then like in a year's time, try again on the same image, just so you can see how far you've progressed and how how your artwork has come along. Emily's better try sending my mum to get my mum to send a picture for you in the end. Yeah, absolutely. So about 6 p.m. tonight, roughly. Um, social media squirrel Joe, she'll be putting a post up with a picture of this, my finished drawing. And um, if you comment or you get a grown-up to comment with a picture of your finished artwork before nine o'clock tonight, I'll um sit there and write you some feedback. I'll tell you what you what I think you've done really well and what you could do to progress your artwork on a bit more. Is next week the rhino or the jaguar? Next week's the rhino. And then the week after is the jaguar. It'd be interesting. I, I know it's two grey animals that we're doing in a row, but I think it would be nice to, to do that in a way because you'll be able to see how far your, your grey tones and your texture work has come along. Erin's called hers trunk. <laughs> That's a good one. I've got Michael next to me. I just said he's sitting there. He's a quiet and being good. Um, Michael is my 10-year-old son. What would you call your elephant, Michael? Golden eyes. Golden eyes because you've, you've made his eyes golden. Oh. But when they trunk the, uh, chop their tusk, tusks off, yeah. don't, how, how are they supposed to like, protect themselves? Well, and as in when we do it to protect the elephants when yeah. they do it underneath they don't because they don't have any real predators they don't really need the tusks to protect themselves mm -hmm. so it's normally the bulls the ma the male elephants that will fight each other over breeding rights of of um other elephants but i assume if they've chopped all of their tusks off then everyone it's all fair for everybody isn't it mm -hmm. <laughs> Mine is Sneezy. <laughs> Mine is Pippi. Is that named after me? <laughs> I'm going to claim it. Good name. So, yeah, just getting the, the grey on. And there is, it's easy to think, oh, elephants are grey. They're just grey. Colour it all in grey. But when you really look at this picture, you can see loads of brown tones as well. And I don't know if that's just the light reflecting. It might be from the sand bath that they give them. So that's another reason, way that they use their trunk is to um, pick up dry sand or dirt and then give themselves like dust baths. So it might clean their skin, but it also could act as a protection from the sun. Well, I know they do that with wet mud, actually. I think I'm confusing the two. Mine is Rose. Uh, I would call my elephant Mel. My friend would call his Ellie. Ellie the elephant. And Kippy. Oh, I'm loving this. We've got a we've got a whole herd of elephants that we're designing together. 
Erin's already on the water. God, Erin's speeding ahead. Because I'm chatting too much, isn't it? I'm going to start going in with some darker greys now. So I've got the base grey down. And now I'm going to start looking at my picture where the darker areas are. So you're sort of building up your image in layers, really. I think as well, especially using coloured pen, pencils, the temptation is just to press harder with the colour to get different tones. But actually what happens with that is you normally get white lines in between. You can see the grain of the paper and um, it, you're better to build up layers. So go over and over it again, even if you haven't got different colours like me. You can create different tones with the same pencil, not by pressing harder, but, but just building up layers on it. And you get more variation in tone that way as well. So when we talk about tone, it's about light and dark. So you, you when you're drawing, uh, doing a bit of artwork, you want to show as many different tones as possible. So you don't want just, just light and just dark grey. There should be everything in between as well. And that's what helps to make your image more realistic. Mine is Bean. <laughs> Erin, has anyone seen an elephant in a zoo before? I have. Yes, I think I've seen Indian elephants in a zoo. I don't think I've seen African. I've named mine Taffy as I love it for an animal name. That is a cool name. I don't know anyone that's called their pets or animals Taffy. We have seen them at Howlett squirting water. That must be Freya and Emily. Mm -hmm. Hannah's starting with a hat. <laughs> was it you, Hannah, that did the tree frog last week with the little hat? Yeah. I liked that. It was a nice surprise. Yes, it was, Hannah. I thought that was very creative. Did you know that the real name for the mammoth isn't mammoth, but mammothus? I did not know that. Is that a Latin name? I struggle enough with English, to be fair. <laughs> Are we drawing the body? I'm not going to. I'm stopping at the neck just so that I can focus my time on getting some more of the details because there's a lot going when you really look at this image. But if you want to, then by all means. I mean, it, the image stops at his legs, doesn't it? So you can't see the whole thing. If you want to add in the body, you absolutely. If you wanted to find some other reference pictures online so you could get the accuracy with the feet, etc., you can by all means do. And there's nothing to stop you from coming on working on this after we've finished. So I'm obviously going to try and keep this to an hour and try and get mine done for an hour. But if you want to carry on working in the day, I know last week quite a few people did, then please do. Down tones going on now because I can see that in the photo. So I'm trying to keep it as accurate to the picture as possible. Melissa's put, I would call my elephant Ellie, and my brother would Max would call it Shadow. Ooh, cool names. Um, my elephant has a happy smile. That's what I liked about the tree frogs, actually. They you could see character in them. You could start, you could see personality almost coming through. He does look like he's got a smile, actually, doesn't he? That sort of crease there. Hi, 
and I said it doesn't think it looks good I you know we are our harshest critics I think we beat ourselves up too much and I bet it does look good but what the problem is when you're working on a piece of artwork you can see where things aren't quite right because you've been drawing it and you've been looking at it for a long time and you also have a better idea in your head of what you want it to look like and it's very rare that you get exactly what you see in your head on the page but I, I can almost guarantee that if you show somebody else they'd say it was a good drawing I was really scared to draw an elephant because of the texture, but I love mine. Yeah, to be honest, I don't find it the easiest thing to do either, but it's good to work out of our comfort zone a little bit and try something a bit new because you're learning new skills that way then, aren't you? If you were really good at drawing dogs and only ever drew dogs, that's great, but you're limited to just drawing dogs. <laughs> and it's only through practicing other things that you get better at other things. So I mean, I think with the Rhino next week, we'll be able to use the skills we've developed today and what we've learned from doing today to get a really good image of a Rhino. Because it's very similar skin texture and colour and tone. And rhinos are quite fascinating creatures as well, like elephants, aren't they? They're almost prehistoric. They look like they could still belong with the dinosaurs. Emily, I'm making a break for it to get the pencils out, make a second elephant, maybe use some pencils in the first drawing as pencils and pens would make it nice. Yeah, mix the mediums up. Why not? Experiment. So you've got the vibrant colours from the pen pens and then you could add in more detail with the pencils. I'd love to see what, you, what you'd produce. Emily's never drawn an elephant before. Well, then that's something you've achieved today. That's what a big learning step you've made. I'm going to, I can see that on this elephant, oh, what's going on here? There's some like, what looks like splashes of water. So I'm going to try and incorporate that into my drawing as well. You can leave that out if you don't like the look of that. You'd rather we didn't have those little spots on him. You don't have to put them in. But I'm going to add them in as extra detail. Did you know that swimming dinosaurs and flying dinosaurs aren't dinosaurs? Are they not? What are they classed as then? I didn't. I just assumed if they were around at that time, they were dinosaurs. But I, I am no dinosaur expert. How are you getting on, Michael? I've got a bow tie on him. <laughs> Michael's drawn a bow tie on his elephant. That's cute. I like that. He's got like purple, blue, red. Joe? Joe? Yeah. Are you still working on it? Are you finished? No, finished? Michael's finished his. He works much quicker than me. And he's added some creative flair with a bow tie and multicolored trunk. <laughs> Cute. I love it. Flying and swimming reptiles is what they're classified are. Ginny says, wow. Oh, amazing. Well done, Michael. You can read the comments. He's beaming now. <laughs> and he's got some of those brown spots on his head as well, hasn't he? And his trunk. Yeah, so I've got to put the same brown tone. I think they've been in the water. I think that's why his trunk looks like it's wet. I think they've been playing around in the water. Oh, lots of nice compliments coming in for Michael. Never yeah, you've just made his day. <laughs> you never had that. <laughs> Got a terrible mum who doesn't do it. No, 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 only from you. Only from me, okay. <laughs> I think that's what's nice about this. I think that's why it's nice that... Um, you can put your pictures up at the end because 
we've all got fantastic mums or dads or whoever that's helping you with your home education but sometimes it's nice to have compliments on your work from other people as well so you don't have to share your artwork obviously but if you want to I will give you some feedback which might be useful evidence any parents that are listening for um if you're keeping evidence of your child's learning Ava's drawn an elephant before How's this one going in comparison? Would you say that your drawing is, is better this time round? How do I make it so brown? I am using a brown. It's called Burn Umber, but it's just a dark brown. Hannah's got no grey, so doing brown. Oh, that's a good, good way. Um, and actually, there is a lot of brown tones in this, but also, if you did want to get some more grey, you could just use the black, but really gently. So I'm going to go in with, like, this is called a deep grey, so it's almost black but not quite, to try and get some of the more of these wrinkles popping out a little bit more. Mark's already done, wow. So speedy, I hardly pop. I'm going to try and go back in so there's quite big wrinkles around his eye. I'm going to get in there and then I've got this darker tone around his head as well, creating a bit of a shadow. So you can see it's almost like the shape of his skull, you can see. I'm done, my friend's done too. Oh, slow down, I can't give up. <laughs> if you're using watercolours and you're finished, you could, I would say, take a little bit of a break whilst I catch up so I can show you how to use the watercolour, uh, the paint and the, not the paint, the water and the paintbrush most effectively. If you haven't got watercolour pencils but you're enjoying these draw alongs, I would recommend maybe investing in a cheap set of them because. As far as I'm concerned, I'm going to be doing this every week during our term time. So we'll be doing planning some more sessions next term as well. Oh, Jenny's little sister broke her wrist yesterday, falling in the mud. Oh, no. Is she all cast up? Is it a writing hand, a drawing hand as well? What a nightmare. Scarlet's nearly done. Blimey. I need to get a wiggle on. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> do you know, I thought that was going to do that today. I had a feeling. Camera fell down. <laughs> and if you could see my very um, amazing setup of taping it to a stand <laughs> you'd understand why it fell let's hope that's that's last might need some stronger tape <laughs> left hand and only a little break so just a spin oh well, i hope it heals soon because that must be a pain and literally <laughs> i haven't touched wood i have only ever broken a toe so i can't imagine what it feels like to break a proper bone yeah, and adding a top hat. Yeah, I think an elephant looks like it could have a top hat, couldn't it? Has that inspired you? Yeah. Mike, yeah. Mike was adding a top hat now. He wants to do the same. I'm going in to add this shadow here. And then I think I'll have to jump to using the watercolour so that we don't run out of time. So ordinarily, I would spend a little bit more time on this picture.
in order to be done by 12 I'm gonna rush a little bit so that we can see the finished end result um I've never broken a bone or sprained it well don't tempt fate by saying that out loud <laughs> touch wood can't imagine it's an exp oh, I've sprained an ankle before that was horrible I was surfing and I just I'm not not a particularly good surfer but I just managed to surf a really a, a way for I stood up for about 10 seconds which if you've ever tried surfing you know that that's quite an achievement because it's hard it's really hard and um I jumped off the surfboard thinking it I was in the sand but I was still in about a foot of water and I twisted my ankle ne underneath me and had to go to hospital in a wetsuit <laughs> so that was fun <laughs> what a way to end my surfing experience My dad broke his toe because he dropped a bottle of mayo on it. Who knew <laughs> mayo could be so lethal? <laughs> what a funny story. If it's recent, I hope he does well in recovery. <laughs> yeah. Get some more of these wrinkles going. And once I've done the watercolour, you can actually go in again with the pencils if you want more defined lines as well. So you can keep building up your picture. I'll show you close up so you can see a bit better where I'm at. The trunk. So it all looks a bit fuzzy at the moment. Now with the paint, when I keep calling it paint, it is just water I'm gonna be putting on. It blends the colours even more and hopefully you'll see he looks a bit more real life, a bit more realistic. Social media, Joe broke all her toes except the middle one with a bowling ball. Ow. And how on earth did the middle one not break? <laughs> but the ones either side, that's quite impressive. <laughs> Jenny, I broke my wrist three times. I snapped a bit of bone and it moved. Ooh, I had to have a metal rod in my arm for six weeks. Oh, that sounds horrendous. Right. So I've got a tiny amount of water on my thin paintbrush. Um, this isn't the thinnest I could use, to be fair. But I'm starting with the eyes, really making sure I leave those white highlights. I think that make, makes a huge difference with an image looking realistic and alive or just like a flat image. So try and keep those white highlights. I'm going to go with a slightly bigger brush, I think. Tanara, we are done. Wicked. You've done that in really good time. <laughs> I'm feeling the pressure a little bit now. Like I say, if you're done and you, and you want to hang out and just see how I transform this picture, that's cool. So I load my brush up with water, but not overloading it. If you've got too much water on your brush, you can lose control of the, of the water and... Um, it's harder to control where the colour is. So I tend to just keep loading my brush with a little at a time. And even again, even at this stage, I still need to keep checking back my reference picture and not assuming I know what it looks like because, like I said, my, our memories play tricks. It's but I'm nowhere they're done. Okay, good. It's not just me. <laughs> My mum broke her toe twice. First, she dropped a can of chopped tomatoes. Ow. And second, she dropped her phone. Ow. And was the phone okay? I broke my toe when I was 13, running through a doorway, barefoot, and I caught my little toe on the door frame. It really hurt. <laughs> she broke her case, though, but the phone was okay. Gemma's done. Well done. Like I say, if, if, if you need to go 
and you don't want to hang about, feel free to, obviously. <laughs> but what um, I meant to say was, don't forget, if you want to share your work and get some feedback, look out for a post that Joe will put up this evening. Um, as long as you put post a picture of it, of your work before 9 p.m., I'll try and get work my way through everybody's and give you some personal feedback on your artwork. Um, but I've got to add something funny to my drawing, but you'll see in the photo if I can send one as not to spoil the surprise. I'll look out for it. I think the younger you are, well, the older you are, the the, the less creative and, and your imagination dulls down a bit. So I, I do see everybody's interpretations because I think your brains work so much better than mine. <laughs> I'll show you close up so you can see the difference now that I'm starting to add water. You start to look a little bit more more realistic, yeah. Less like less less of a flat image, isn't yeah. it? And these yeah, go on. Um how old are they when they're like babies? As in how many months are they the mum's pregnant for? No, I mean like how old are they when they're born? <laughs> same as anyone then they're not any age when they're born oh, as in, they different. well so they the, the female elephant is pregnant a lot longer than a, than a, than a human yeah um, yeah and it takes a lot of time a lot longer to grow an animal that size i would imagine um i did know it but i've forgotten now but that is definitely longer than nine months i want to say it's over a year that they're pregnant i think but i'll have to look that up and check what watercolour pencils do I use? I'm using, they're called um, Castle Arts. So this is a big tin, there's three layers of it, and I've only used a handful of the pencils so far. And it's not cheap, this tin, it's about £40, I think. Um, you don't need elaborate ones like that, you can get much smaller sets. And up until very recently, I just used £5 sets of watercolour, but I treated myself recently. Um, Pip can ask you something. Of course you can, whether I answer or not. It's another matter, but you go, you're free to ask. 15 months, Joe said. I think it's 15 months that they're pregnant for. It's a long time to be pregnant. Poor mums. <laughs> oh, we've got conflict information. No, Google's saying 22 months. It's long, it's a long time anyway. I thought nine months was too good. <laughs> I, I didn't didn't enjoy being pregnant. It's hard work. There, and I love drawing and sketching. It's good, isn't it? It's good for it's nice and relaxing. I find. Okay, so the African elephant is twenty two months, and the Asian is eighteen to twenty two months. Wow! So another difference between the elephants as well. Hannah, thank you, Pip, another fab for tutorial. Well, thank you. Thank you for your kind words and thank you for coming and joining us. Hopefully we'll see you next week if you're done. I'll have some facts about the rhino because there's different types of rhino as well. Gemma, enjoy the day. See you next time. Awesome. See you next week. Same time, same place. Yes, it's now every week instead of every fortnight. I enjoy it so much that we're doing this every Monday now, just because I enjoy sitting down and painting on a Monday morning. So, yep, next week we're doing the rhino.
Evie's asked, what's my favourite animal to draw? Did I answer this last week? I, I struggled answering this. I just enjoy all animals, to be fair. Um, I'm not, I find it diff, more difficult to draw birds because of the feathers and the symmetry that you need to, to, to draw. But anything, I do like the British wildlife, so foxes and stags, I said. But I do any animals, really. I really love animals. <laughs> so that's why I focus on it. I think people are all right, but animals are pretty cool. <laughs> Did you know that octopus has three hearts? I did. Do you know, funny enough, we had this conversation with my, both my children last week when I was saying about, oh, uh, because my kids go to farm school and, the, and Elliot, he's four, and he learned that cows have, is it four stomachs? Yeah. Four stomachs. And then I said, oh, did you know an octopus has three hearts? So, yeah, funny that that's come up. In blue blood. My elephant's so cute. Hmm. <laughs> yes. One for breathing and two for pumping blood. I didn't know that bit, so you've just taught me something new. I love foxes, they're my favourite animal. I do, they are lovely. Uh, my mum's house backs onto a field and she has foxes that come every couple of years and have their cubs and you see them playing in the field and they're just like puppies. So cute. So I'm not quite done, though it looks like possibly I am. Um, I'm gonna go back in with a black pencil just to get some more definition and make things stand out a little bit more and to just emphasize some more wrinkles. Ooh, a rhino and an octopus is very interesting to think as three hearts. It's madness, isn't it? Favorite I think is a fox and a squirrel so far and a frog. <laughs> and then to draw a kraken now. Ooh, that'd be a good one. Thank you. Don't compare your artwork to mine because I'm old <laughs> and I've got lots of years experience. Yeah, Michael said his elephant looks like it's been at a fun fair. <laughs> it's got a top hat, very colourful. Trunk is very colourful. Maybe the trunk is like a t shirt or something. Yeah, so just you can see as well, going back in with a pencil afterwards, a darker tone can really help to add a bit more definition. Things start to pop out a bit more on the page. Will you be doing any fancy animals like dragons and unicorns? Oh, it's going to be trickier just because I can't, won't have a photo to reference from. But we could certainly use like a reference of a horse to, and then use mm -hmm. a reference photo of a narwhal to get the horn. So maybe, yeah, maybe we'll plan a term that's all mythical creatures. Yeah. Like a phoenix or something as well. Oh. That's not bad. Or maybe we'll do that for the summer term. So I think next term... I think we've already had the request that we're going to sort of focus on domestic animals. Um, so pets, cats, dogs, rabbits, that kind of thing. But I haven't planned beyond that. So if, if people want it, yeah. we could do that. Certainly. Dragon. Yeah, dragon was so we could look at kimono dragons. <gasps> kimono? Ki kimono. That's, no, the, no, that's, the, kimono. that's the dressing gown, isn't it? <laughs> kimono dragons. <laughs> Yeah, might be a cool way of doing it. Yeah, instead of just searching up dragon picture. Yeah, we can get digital. Yeah, so we can get other pieces of artwork to reference. But what's nice is working from actual photographs. But we just, yeah, we just look at the animals that they are most like and then use our creative flair to add in other details. Maybe, like, we do one lesson where we make one mythical creature, but it can be whatever you want. Yeah. Like, so you can just add whatever you want, like a horn or something. Yeah, we did that when we studied ancient Greece, didn't we? We were looking at mythical creatures. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, I remember. And then we, like, drawed whatever mythical creature you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking. 
dragons, Komodo dragons. Yeah. They're really venomous. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I think their saliva is venomous, isn't it? I think. And they're really like tough skin, like mm -hmm. all the dolls. Again, they seem like another ancestor of the dinosaurs, don't they? Mm. And they're really heavy. Oh no, you've smudged me work. <laughs> it happens. Nearly there. Like the ears. They're quite cute, these ears, aren't they? Yeah. Especially the size of them. So a Komodo dragon in the zoo one? I've never seen never seen them. I have. Where? In when I was with Lisa. When oh, at London Zoo. zoo. Did yeah, they have London them at London Zoo? zoo? Yeah, they've got Komodo dragon in London zoo. Did not know that. It's I've not been there for a while. I think I might be done. I'm at that stage where I think, oh, if I keep going, I'm going to muck it up. <laughs> it happens. Right there. I'm not sure I should have done that. <laughs> comments might be coming a bit late yeah i think there's always a bit of a delay on the lives and the comments isn't there a bearded dragon yeah what does it have a beard no it's, it refers to the frill that it has a bearded dragon oh. i just imagine the dragon having a beard <laughs> be a bit weird <laughs> maybe he has a moustache as yeah. well I'm just going to try and rub out some of these other pencil marks. I think that's my elephant done. Oh, I've done it again. <laughs> Terrible. Smudging my work. So don't forget, when you think you're finished, you're not finished until you sign your artwork. I actually forgot to do that. Yeah. So I always sign it, and then I put the date as well, or I put the year. So it's my second drawing of 2023. And that's my little effer lump finished. I haven't got a name for him. So yeah, that went bad timing, nearly spot on an hour. Um, but like I say, if you want to share your work on the comments, um, please do so. Uh, we'll have another live next week, same time, same thing. Um, and Joe is going live this Friday with some special announcements at so 11 o'clock. And like with all our lives, if you can't make any of those times, just come back and watch it another time. They stay on our page. You just scroll through past events. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing your artwork. I'm sure it's going to show mine up a little bit <laughs> and show sure it'll be a lot more creative than mine. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to see it. I look forward to this part of my week every week now. So thank you so much for joining us. And like I say, hopefully see you next week. Bye-bye.